some practicality to the word of of the Almighty. You know, um, where some people say that, you know, like we said, where do I start? Some people start from the beginning of the book. Some people may start from the New Testament. I would say it's probably good to start from the beginning of the book, of course. But it's also necessary to understand the revelation of Jesus Christus, of Jesus Christ. Because Christ and his testimony clarifies a lot of the misconceptions of of, of Judaism and of the Old Testament perspective. And um, some of this has been revealed why it's so important besides just the fact that Yeshua, Yehoshua, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior, is the Messiah. And many of our so-called Jewish brothers and cousins and others should receive Christ. But also in truth, Christ or Jesus has not been properly um, ministered by the so-called Gentiles. So therefore, there's a lot of there's a lot of things which are unscriptural, unbiblical, and there's a lot much more of that. One could call it um, um, counterfeit Christianity or stuff that's Lord, Lord, but not really doing or not really affirming what he truly has said according to what he said would happen this is what we witness in christianity but this is now to continue on the natures of the nature of god or the natures of god and we learn a lot by looking at the name and this is still within the question of is jesus or is jesus yeshua is he god or ja and we wanted to begin off as we did to distinguish between God, the Hebraic God, which is at the root El, Elohe, and Elohim, and there's some other El names as well. And the Schofield Reference Bible has a couple of sections, footnote sections, where they give um, due um, regard and emphasis to going into the different names of God from their Hebraic, from their Hebraic um, standing and the Hebraic overstanding that are important and necessary because many say, well, it's the same thing, God or Jah. It is a related thing. It's related, but it's not the same thing. This is why in some scriptures it's found, it's found Jah or Yah or Yahweh, and in some areas only Yah is found. And there are specific, these are like equations. You understand? They, they mean something. It's not just an arbitrary choice of words. You understand whether the God or Jah, but how the question was posed we thought was interesting because God, Jah, you have God, Yah, or El, Jah, or Elijah, which we brought, brought forward from the Hebraic being overstood by the Ethiopic that El is Chayel, is Chayel. If you go to the root, you'll find that before El was Chayel because Chayel or Chayle, Chayle, comes from Ayala, also in the Ethiopic and the Hebraic is Ayala. And then in the Hebrew, you have the name ha, uh, um, 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 Ha-El. And in the Hebrew, you have the name, and we had the video where we touched on a little bit of the etymology of Ha-El. And the beauty of this is that you can follow up on this in the Strong's Concordance, and then also within um, Dillman's, Dillman's, August Dillman's Ethiopic Grammar, we have that book as well in um, reprint again. And it's a, it's a little bit of more of the, the, the higher education. His Majesty broke this down in his speech book, his selected utterances. He says there's different kinds of education. There is like general education. There is uh, special education. And there is also higher education, perhaps even another particular category of education. But even in that one, two, three level, there's a general education, like basic knowledge. And then there is special knowledge, a special emphasis, a special, like in school or college, one has a general, the basic core curriculum, and then one has whatever they want to master in, and they might minor in something else as well, and then they may have to go to a level beyond that university or that school or those studies to a higher level. Like you have kindergarten, you have elementary school, the elementals, 
and then you have high school, and then you have college and university and then even specialized schools, or you might have a particular trade school, a particular area, like in the ministry of God and Christ, in, in the society, in the community, in the church, it is the same thing. And another extension of that would be to the Ethiopian World Federation on a certain level, and we maintain that part of the reason that it will lack reaching and manifesting its full potential is until we recognize that each local is like a local church based on the teaching of his majesty. This is why those folks who began the federation, Ethiopian World Federation, they began that churchical level, that real church, not playing church, but real church. You understand? That means that everybody is hit by the rebuke of the Holy Spirit and everyone recognizes in themselves. And this recognition of our own sinfulness, faultiness, but of the goodness of God in Christ will, will help us deal with our brother and our sister. And this is what will help nurture and support, create a support network, you understand, which is the church, you understand, and not this hierarchical crap that's going on, which is abomination. It's abomination to Yeshua. It's abomination to Jesus Christ. But here we had one to give it to Tehillim, and this is the, the what they call the Jewish um, Tehillim right here. That says Tehillim in the Hebrew, right? This is a, a synagogue um, Psalms Psalter or a book of Psalms. And the reason why we wanted to get it is to compare the English translation. There's a little code King James has. That's interesting. If you understand the code in the King James, even if you don't have this, you are able to intuit which particular name of God in the Hebrew is behind, is actually behind the particular um, usages in the King James scripture, in the King James. Like when you see G-O-D as caps, sometimes it's a little different in the Hebrew then capital G, lowercase o-d, and then when you see gods also for lowercase g-o-d, though you'll never see capital g-o-d, there's a little code that the King James translators use, and we was able to um, intuit the code, though it's not 100%, but it's more like um, almost like an 85%, you know, it's an 85% level where you really know well, what really, you know, what really it is. It's not really on that um perfect level, but it, it's a pretty good code of it. But here, we wanted to touch on um, this right here, this particular, this particular psalm. Now, in this particular psalm, um, it says, uh, what, Elohim, you understand, Elohim Nitzub or Nitzab, 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 you understand, Nitzab, yeah, Nitzab. Yeah, that'll be the Nitzab because this is the square Masoretic Hebrew, the latter Hebrew. And it says, uh, Ka e dot, Ka e dot, Ka e dot el, Ka e dot el. In other words, God standeth in the congregation of El, of El. In the midst of the judges, he judges. This is, this is the, um, beginning of uh, Psalm 82. It says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. It's interesting right here. It's interesting because when you're reading the Hebrew, the Masoretic Hebrew, it would say, Bikarab, 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 or Karab, Bikarab, Elohim, Yash, Yashfit or Yashfet or Yashfot, Yashfit, Yashfet. They have they have overlap and the Jews do overlap in vowels and different communities choose to, you know, the the, the Kare and the Kitiv choose to it's written one way, but they choose to interpret what the possible Hebrew is. That's why there's differences among the so called Jews on exactly which one it is, because many refuse to go to the Ethiopic you understand, as a reference source, August Dillman in his Ethiopic grammar, he, he points that out. But here now, the footnote here is that God, the judge of judges, it says El, or it says Elohim, is the heavenly judge. Stand if the verb is not the usual one denoting the opposite of sitting. It conveys the idea of taking up a position 
for a solemn purpose, as in Deuteronomy XXIX or 29 and 9, of Israel to ratify the covenant. That when it says he standeth, it's not the usual. And you, we can only learn this from looking at the, the Hebraics. You understand, in the Western, coming from the Western perspective, it's not the usual word for standing, but this standing, it has the idea or the spirit, the vibration of taking up a position for a solemn purpose of Israel, like to ratify the al Kidan of the B'nai Barit, the covenant, in the congregation of God. Now here it uses the Hebrew El, what we talked about right here. It even shows us here the Hebrew El. Now the... the um, the explanation here, it says, an assembly convened by the all-powerful. They actually have, I don't know how clear it's going to come out on the, um, on the camera right here, but I want you to see right here if you can. It says he convened, it says the all-powerful. It says the all-powerful L. He convenes a congregation on behalf of, he, he, it says he, the, an assembly is convened by the all-powerful. The all powerful. So the idea of L, which is the root, which is which is which is the two letters, the root, is a contraction in the Hebraic from the Ethiopic Chaya. You have the key of it, because some folks have said, even um, beloved Doctor York, Malachi Z. York, he said that Chaya is not in the, it's not Hebrew, it's not such and such. A, I don't know what he's talking about. What you should first of all explain is that the Hebraics come from the ancient Ethiopics. Dillman, August Dillman, in his book, he, he laid down all the material there, and he got a big fight for that because that went contrary to that early day of European Judaism back in the 1800s. This is when it was solidifying and encoding the form of Judaism that they thought was Judaism, that all the real Hebrews, you know, the black folks and everything, were already they lost their identity. But then they found Ethiopia, and I was like, uh-oh, you know, what we're going to do about this? And Beta Israel you know, sprouted up in their eyesight. But here in the, in the Bible, it has Ha'el. There's actually a name that you'll find, Ha'el, which means the El or the God or is interpreted as the true God. Here they're saying this is the all-powerful, the all-powerful. Now, what does Ha'el and Ha'ila mean in the Ethiopic or the Amharic? It means the power or the power of. If it's said as Ha'ilei, Haile instead of Haile. Haile means the power of. That means something else has to follow it. Haile means my power or my all powerful one. Now, what's so interesting about this right here is that we can see the etymology from the ancient Ethiopic or the Gutas of the Hebrew L. And then in modern Amharic, we have the word Ayale. So we have Ayala and Hayala. This is like some black people, Jamaicans, West Indians, and even some people from down south in different parts, how they speak is a little different. They're saying the same thing. One may say Ayala, the other say Hayala, Hayala or Hayala. So it's like we say, um, somebody says, um, um, some West Indians will say Ayla, Ayla, with an A sound, while others will say Hayala. Both of them, in a sense, etymologically are correct because we have ayala and hayala. This is all basic. This is just basic right here. This is what any bar mitzvah or mature or bat mitzvah mature um, Hebrew, Judaic boy or girl would have gone through to prepare them by the age of 13. Some of these basics they would know already. This is what Hawadi Apollos is talking about in Hebrews chapter 5. He's saying the first principles, the basic principles, the basic things that you should know, you don't even know. And this is one of the basic things behind God. So what we say is Jesus God, he is the son of God. So if we say that he's the son of God, he's the son of himself, and we start to confuse the true interpretation of religion into what a lot of other kind of religions have done. You know, we're saying because that lack of discipline, they have kind of have some true principles like Buddhism or Hinduism, and some, um, but then it gets blurry in some places. This is what's happened with Christianity because of the lack of that word. But there's a specific, specificity. This is why a lot of Jews, Hebrews, 
think there's a lot of positive things in Christianity. And some actually have become Jews for Jesus and so on, but some still are a little bit reserved. You understand? They're somewhat reserved because some things have not been properly explained according to the Hebraic foundation, you understand, which is very scientific, very mathematical, very clear. Think about it for a moment. You understand, when we talk about common law, law, a lot of the law come from the Hebraic common law where the black nobility were ruling, left behind the scriptures and that idea and that practice. White folks and other mulattoes came into it. And, you know, we trace all these royal families back to the real nobility We find black folks. We're not to stop on that point but recognize it, but recognize what's deeper than that, what's the real connection. But the main thing is that from the Hebraic, you understand, from the Hebraic or the Judaic idea has also come through those who have mastered certain basic principles, a lot of discoveries in science, too. Look at Albert Einstein. Part of that was because he was brought up in a Judaic idea. He may not have been a religious Jew, but his conscience was open to recognize certain things through that particular discipline. Now, I say all that to basically kind of come back to this point right here about whether Jesus is God or Jah. This is why this is probably one, one of those complex questions among a lot of folks. Most folks will just say, yes, he is. You, you know, yes, he is God, you know, because he's God. I mean, he, ra he, he, he raised from the dead. No, his father raised him. That's a true testimony. He didn't raise himself, according to the scripture. His father raised him. The father is, according to him, greater than him. Now, the mystery, the mishkir, is not understood by most so-called Christians and most folks because they have, they're dull of hearing. They don't even want to hear what the real foundation of the word is. They want to just say, well, he died for me and everything, and, and so I don't have to really, that's not, he'll work it out. And this is one of the reasons why this counterfeit continues to cause so much, um, so much tribulation. Now, if we go to John chapter 10, 34, let's go to John chapter 10, verse 34, because this, is, this picks up on this particular psalm right here that we're in, which is Psalm 82, Psalm 82. So when we read in Psalm 82, it says that God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, he judges among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Notice in the beginning of Christ, of Yeshua, Yeshua's ministry, he says, don't judge. Really what he said, if you could read it and understand, he said, don't judge against. In other words, don't be condemnatory. Don't be, he didn't say don't weigh and try to figure out what it really is, but he said don't be so easy to condemn. You know what I'm saying? You know, like a lot of the modern Christians, you're going to hell because of all kinds. You don't go to hell. You're worthless, huh? and you're a big Christian. Okay. Anyway, he said, don't judge. But really, when we understand, overstand, he said, don't condemn. Because when we read it in the language, in the pure and hard, it's like, don't judge against. Because you can judge on, on behalf of, but most folks judge against. They condemn is the interpretation of that. Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Imagine, will we have 99% of the people so-called at the bottom and 1% at the top if, if, if there was really those who were doing this and not talking about when Jesus come back, he's going to judge you. If, if you're saying you're of him and not even interested in the fullness of his kingdom or in the real operation, you're saying, Lord, Lord, he'll say, I never knew you. You understand? Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. So a, a real Christian is supposed to be helping to rid the poor and needy out of the hand of the wicked. His majesty did so. The 29, and including Ethiopia, 30 nations freed them up from colonialism, from the yoke of white supremacy. You understand? He rid them out of the hand of the wicked. This is why we, why we need Haile. You understand? It says they know not. They're ignorant. They know not. Neither will they understand. This is deep. It says they know not. Neither will they understand. This is too much for them. But still do good for them. You understand? Still do good for them. They walk on in darkness and spiritual ignorance. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. I, I have said ye are gods. Now, check this out. A lot of folks you know, don't like to really accept the fact that according to the scripture, yes, we are gods, but in what context? See, a lot of folks will read that in ignorance and then run off, yeah, I'm a god because, 
this because it's in the Bible. We are God, so I'm a God, and that, that's the only thing they're interested in. If that's true, I'm interested in what what is connected to that. You know, what rights, roles, responsibilities, you know what I mean? I want to know about the fullness. Somebody say, you got an inheritance. You're going to run around. I got an inheritance. I'm a rich man. You're not going to go in and say, can I see the will and testament? Can I really go and study really what this is all about? Of course you would want to find out what it's all about. If it was material but spiritual, people play games. Right here in John chapter 10, it says that when he said, I and my father are one, he didn't say, I am my father. He said, we are in a oneness. We're in a unity. You understand? Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Then the, the religionists, so the, like the religious people of the community. Yeshua, Jesus answered them, John 10 and uh, 30, 32. Uh, he answered them, many good works have I shewed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? Remember Christ says, if, you, if, if he's done this and they treated him like that, then we should surprise us that we do certain things and they'll treat us in the same way. See, when you start to do it, you come across that, you'd be like, well, whoa. You know, and, and this is what confirms the reality. You understand? By doing it, it confirms the reality. 33 says, the Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not. People still talk in this psychological matrix, right? Like for a good thing, we're not going to let her got a good thing, but for blasphemy because you did this. They're condemning, right? For blasphemy. They say that he blasphemed because he says, I and my father are one. They say we blaspheme, you understand, because of our witness of the king of kings and his Christ. They, you know, they're always up to the same rhetoric. But for blasphemy and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. They say that we as Rastafari, we are making Hala Selassie God. He's just a man, you know. It's like don't, they're dull of hearing. They don't even hear what they're saying. They're still saying, okay, let, let's check this out. Let's really, can I ask you a question? And really, let's put it to the, let's put it to the test. Let's prove this. And so they run off like these Jews did, right? Then Jesus answered them. Check out, check out what he says. This is our answer as well. Is it not written in your law? Isn't it written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Now, what is Christ? Yeshua, Jesus, what is he quoting? He's quoting Psalm 82, verse 6. 82, verse 6. He said, it's written in your law. Wow, it's written in your law. Notice what he, he said, the law will be Torah, in that sense, Torah. Now, remember we have the synagogue. This right here is a synagogue um, um, Torah. This is a synagogue Torah right here. Now, what's interesting about the synagogue Torah, it's used in the synagogue. It's used not in place of Torah, but alongside Torah within the Torah studies and the, and the, the liturgy, the Kadashi or the Kadash, you understand, the Kaddish or the Kaddish, as they say, of the um, Jews, the nowadays Jews. It says, it is not written, is it not written in your law, I say to your God, that you are Elohim? And it says, if he called, verse 35, if he called them Elohim, if he called them gods, to whom the word of God came. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, he didn't call it them gods who the word of God did not come to. To, the, to those who the word of God was delivered to, he called them gods too. And the scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. No matter what they want to do, mistranslate, pervert it, the word is still a matrix, a code. It cannot be broken. They may twist up the word here, but what the true word is reflecting in creation, in reality, still remains true. It says in verse 36, Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified, who the Father has made caduce, so yet to Kedda said, and sent him to the world, and sent him on an errand, on a mission, thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the Son of God, because he was saying to them, I am Bain Ha Elohim. I'm a Bain. I'm a, I'm, a I'm, a, I'm a son, a Ben, a Bain Ha Elohim of the gods. I'm a son of the gods, or in the Hebraic sense, of the true God, Baruchu. If I do the works, do not the works, of my father. Don't believe me. If I'm not doing the works of my father, then don't accept this. 
But if I do, though ye believe me not, though you try to, de you are a denier, an infidel, a kahadi, a denier, it says that ye may know and admit that the Father, you understand? He says, but if I do, you understand? But if I do not the works of my Father, don't believe me. Don't admit it. But if I do, though ye don't admit